Here at St. John's Cathedral, we are so proud of our seniors who are graduating from high school and we've made these signs and I want to bless them and then they're going to be placed on the lawns of these great young people who are going forth into the world. Oh, Almighty God, we ask that these signs may be signs of our love for, for Abigail, Connor, Ellie, Zaid, Ben, Jack, and Sam. May they be blessed as young adults going forth into the world. May they make the world a better place in your name. Amen. Welcome to our St. Mary's Episcopal Church campus. We thank you for your interest in supporting our food ministry, especially in this difficult and challenging time for all of us. And we pray for your safety and the safety of your family and friends. St. Mary's has been designated by United Way and Florida First Coast Relief Effort as a resource for our immediate area. Already since uh, the beginning of the pandemic, we've seen our visitors double in number as many are visiting the pantry for the very first time. In a moment, I'm going to introduce you to Emily Waters, our pantry manager, and she will share with you the items that are most needed at this time. We thank you for your concern and your care, for your assistance and your prayers. God bless you. Welcome everyone. Um, this is our new food distribution station. Um, we're working out of the church. Uh, and so every Tuesday and Thursday, we give out dry goods, produce, uh, dairy if we have any and some meat if we have any as well. Uh, so what we really need right now are our staple food products. Any pasta, sauce, uh, peanut butter and jelly, dry goods, uh, rice, beans, canned soups, vegetables, and then also hygiene products because it's very important to stay hygienic and clean in these times. Um, these are normal things that you would stock up for yourself and your family. So if you think about going to the grocery store, buy an extra, if it's buy one, get one, uh, it would benefit everyone here at the food pantry because dry goods tend to go the fastest and are the most in need right now. So thank you for thinking of us. Thank you so much for giving. Y'all be safe. Put your gloves on, put your mask on, and stay six feet. Amen. Be blessed. Amen.
Welcome, my friends, to Trinity Sunday. And on behalf of our dean, my clergy colleagues, all the people of St. John's Cathedral, welcome to our worship at this 10 o'clock hour. We ask you, invite you, uh, to have before you a piece of bread or enough bread for those who might be with you at the computer. We also invite you to find a candle and matches so that you may light that candle uh, as we begin our prayers this morning. And also, if you have a prayer book, uh, to have that in front of you. If not, there are words that will come onto the screen that will help you in the worship. To begin our worship this morning, we will sing hymn 371. Blessed be our God. Forever and ever. Amen. Let us say together, Almighty God, to you, to you all, all hearts, hearts are, are open, open, all desires known, known and, and from, from you no secrets, secrets are hid. Cleanse, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, Spirit that, that we may perfectly, perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ, Christ our, our Lord. Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, you have given to us your servant's grace by the confession of a true faith to acknowledge the glory of the eternal Trinity and in the power of your divine majesty to worship the unity. Keep us steadfast in this faith and worship, and bring us at last to see you in your one and eternal glory, O Father, who with the Son and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated for the book of Genesis. In the beginning, when God created the heavens and the earth, 
The earth was a formless void, and darkness covered the face of the deep, while a wind from God swept over the face of the waters. Then God said, Let there be light, and there was light. And God saw that the light was good, and God separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. And there was evening, and there was morning, the first day. And God said, Let there be a dome in the midst of the waters, and let it separate the waters from the waters. So God made the dome and separated the waters that were under the dome from the waters that were above the dome. And it was so. God called the dome sky, and there was evening and there was morning the second day. And God said, Let the waters under the sky be gathered together into one place, and let the dry land appear. And it was so. God called the dry land earth, and the waters that were gathered together he called seas. And God saw that what it was good. Then God said, Let the earth be, foot, be put forth vegetation, plants yielding seed, and fruit trees of every kind on earth that bear fruit with the seed in it. And it was so. The earth brought forth vegetation, plants yielding seed of every kind, and trees of every kind bearing fruit with the seed in it. And God saw that it was good. And there was evening, and there was morning, the third day. And God said, Let there be lights in the dome of the sky to separate the day from the night. And let them be for signs and for seasons and for days and years. And let them be lights in the dome of the sky to give light upon the earth. And it was so. God made the two great lights, the greater light to rule the day and the lesser light to rule the night and the stars. God set them in the dome of the sky to give light upon the earth, to rule over the day and over the night, and to separate the light from the darkness. And God saw that it was good. And there was evening and there was morning the fourth day. And God said, Let the waters bring forth swarms of living creatures, and let birds fly above the earth across the dome of the sky. So God created the great sea monsters and every living creature that moves of every kind with which the waters swarm and every winged bird of every kind. And God saw that it was good. God blessed them, saying, Be fruitful and multiply and fill the waters in the seas, and let birds multiply on the earth. And there was evening, and there was morning, the fifth day. And God said, Let the earth bring forth living creatures of every kind, cattle and creeping things, and wild animals of the earth of every kind. And it was so. God made the wild animals of the earth of every kind, and the cattle of every kind, and everything that creeps upon the ground of every kind. And God saw that it was good. Then God said, Let us make humankind in our image, according to our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the birds of the air, and over the cattle, and over all the wild animals of the earth, and over every creeping thing that creeps upon the earth. So God created humankind in his image. In the image of God, he created them. 
Male and female, he created them. God blessed them, and God said to them, Be fruitful and multiply, and fill the earth and subdue it, and have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the birds of the air, and over every living thing that moves upon the earth. God said, See, I have given you every plant yielding seed that is upon the face of all the earth, and every tree with seed in its fruit. You shall have them for food. And to every beast of the earth, and to every bird of the air, and to everything that creeps on the earth, everything that has breath of life, I have given every green plant for food. And it was so. God saw everything that he had made, and indeed, it was very good. And there was evening, and there was morning, the sixth day. Thus the heavens and the earth were finished, and all their multitude. And on the seventh day, God finished the work that he had done. And he rested on the seventh day from all the work that he had done. So God blessed the seventh day and hallowed it, because on it God rested from all the work that he had done in creation. These are the generations of the heavens and the earth when they were created. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Matthew. Glory Glory to you, Lord Christ. Now the eleven disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain to which Jesus had directed them. When they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. And Jesus came and said to them, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go, therefore, and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything that I have commanded you. And remember, I am with you always, to the end of the age. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to, to you, Lord, Lord Christ. Christ. of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, blessed Trinity. Amen. My former father-in-law was a Methodist minister and spent all of his life around the Memphis area in Tennessee. 
He was the chaplain at Memphis State University during the Civil Rights Movement. And one of his favorite stories to tell us, he's long since passed away, was about the day after Dr. Martin Luther King was shot. Don Moorhead put on his collar a black cross around his neck and went to downtown Memphis to march down Poplar Avenue to City Hall. The dean of the Episcopal Cathedral in Memphis did a great thing. He went and got the cross off the altar, lifted it up, and led the march down Poplar Avenue. They started walking. People were chanting and singing. Other people were screaming and yelling at them. It was a scary time in this country, as is today. But what Don remembered most was as he was walking down the avenue, there was an old woman sitting on a rocking chair on her front porch. She was rocking back and forth furiously, back and forth, and finally she stood up and shaking her fist, pointing her finger, said, looking directly at Don, you get that cross back in the church where it belongs. You get that cross back in the church where it belongs. The cross doesn't just belong here. In fact, this is only the spiritual gas station so we can get out there. And in this pandemic, we've seen the cross move out of this sanctuary into your homes more and more. And we've seen protests in the streets And we're trying to follow the gospel. But I still don't think we fully understand what Jesus is asking of us. In today's gospel, Jesus encounters the disciples for the last time on a mountain, a holy mountain which is so much a part of the scripture, from Mount Sinai to the Mount of the Transfiguration. And here they are in the Galilee on a mountain, and Jesus gives the disciples what is called the Great Commission. He puts the job in their laps and in our lap. He says, go now. Make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Now, for centuries, Christians have believed what Jesus basically said was, go out and tell everybody about me, which is true. He did want the world to know about God's love and how God's love was manifested in his life. But we miss an essential part of his commandment, of his commission. If we think that all he asked was for us to tell the story about his life and death and resurrection, there was more to it than that. Jesus asked us to baptize specifically in the name of what is called the Trinity, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Now, most Christians, at least in this country, do not really touch the Trinity much. We don't understand it, for one thing. It's incomprehensible and uncomfortable. And so usually we think of Jesus and we think of God, we think of the Holy Spirit, but we often don't lump them together into this concept of the Trinity because it's hard. But we need the Trinity today. We need to understand what Jesus was asking of us because the Trinity, though it is incomprehensible and rightly so, it's a reminder that human beings cannot understand God, and we need that reminder. 
If you think you understand three in one and one in three, then you don't understand the Trinity. It's supposed to be beyond our comprehension. But it does reveal to us a vital truth that we need today, which is this. God is relationship. God is relationship, loving, creative, explosive relationship. Yes, God is one God, but within the divine self, there is movement and love and community unlike anything we can fathom. And when God created the world, God did not create the world because God needed company, because God was lonely. God created the world in a divine dance of love and communion out of which we were born. And it says very clearly in the book of Genesis that Paul read that humankind in our plurality, in our diversity, male and female, we together were created in the image of God, not the individual, the community. God's image is an image of all colors, all races, all creeds. It is an image of divine love and relationship. And if we are commissioned to baptize in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, then Jesus has asked us to teach other people about God's relationship of love and about the fact that God is asking us to live out that relationship in our own lives. What we are doing in this country right now by protesting, and then some of the protests get violent, it is not enough. What we really need is to build relationship. Throughout human history, God has called us into peace and love and respect, and the darkness has called us into division and violence and injustice. We need to do everything we can today to ensure that our society is racially just, but also peaceful, that we listen to one another, and that we put value on human relationships Go out and listen to the stories of individuals. Listen to why they think the way they think. Reach out and tell them about who you are. Try to begin with understanding, and then hearts will be changed. Not through more division, but unity in relationship. One of my friends is a parish administrator, and she um, raised her child, a little boy, blonde and blue-eyed, next to her co-worker's little girl. Her co-worker is black and has a beautiful little baby girl who grew up with the little white boy together. And when they were about three years old, the two moms heard some giggling in the nursery of the church as they were finishing their work. It was a busy season getting close to Easter, so they both had picked up their children from the daycare that they went to together, brought them to the office, told them to play in the nursery while they figured out the final details they needed to handle before going home. Well, they heard some giggling, so the mothers walked into the nursery And the little boy and little girl were making uh, what looked like those snow angels. You know, you can go on the ground. I know because I'm from Connecticut. You go on the ground and you wave your hands and your feet and you create an angel. Well, they said, well, why are you two lying on the floor on the carpet looking like you're making angels? And the little boy said, Well, Adrian is rubbing off her dark skin on her skin, and I'm rubbing on her dark skin on my skin, so then we can both be the same color. Here these three-year-olds were, understanding that they loved one another, that they had a relationship, 
and that their skin looked different, so they thought they could rub off one onto the other a little bit to make it even. That's what we need. We need the rub-off effect. We need to get close to one another, learn about each other, and walk in the image of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, who adores the divine self and adores us. And when we are able to truly get along and love another human being, that's when God becomes with us more potently. That's when we live into the image of God, when we learn to love one another on a more profound level, and when we only see the other as something separate, when we move apart and divide, we crush that image of God, the image of the Trinity It was there in the very beginning, my friends. God said, let us make humanity in our image. In the image of God, male and female, God created them together. Many people, one love. Do not let violence and division be the last word in this time. For the sake of the Trinity, remember who you are. Amen. The Book of Common Prayer gives us a special gift several times during the year. It invites us, in lieu of the Nicene Creed, to have the renewal of baptismal vows. This is a particular special time on this Trinity Sunday to renew the vows we took at our baptism. I invite you to turn to page 292 in your Book of Common Prayer and follow along the screen. Do you reaffirm your renunciation of evil and renew your commitment to Jesus Christ? I will, with God's help. Do you believe in God the Father? I I believe believe in in God, God, the Father Father Almighty, Almighty, creator of heaven heaven and and earth. earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God? I believe believe in Jesus Christ, Christ, his His only Son, Son, our Lord. He He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He He will will come come again again to judge the living and the dead. dead. Do you believe in God, the Holy Spirit? I I believe believe in in the Holy Spirit, Spirit, the Holy Holy Catholic Catholic Church, Church, the the communion communion of saints, saints, the the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Will you continue in the apostles' teaching and fellowship, in the breaking of bread, and in the prayers? I will, with God's help. Will you persevere in resisting evil, and whenever you fall into sin, repent and return to the Lord? I I will, will, with with God's God's help. help. Will you proclaim by word and example the good news of God in Christ? I I will, will, with with God's God's help. help. Will you seek and serve Christ in all persons, loving your neighbor as yourself? I I will, will, with with God's God's help. help. Will you strive for justice and peace among all people and respect the dignity of every human being? I I will, will, with with God's God's help. help. May Almighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given us a new birth by water and the Holy Spirit and bestowed upon us the forgiveness of sins, 
Keep us in eternal life by his grace. In Christ Jesus, our Lord. Amen. Amen. At this time and during the prayers of the people, we invite you to find your candle and please light your candle as we begin our prayers together. Prayers of the people. Gracious and eternal God, you have created the human race in all its beauty and diversity. Bring an end to this pandemic that we may emerge safely and with greater reverence of human life and for this precious earth that you have given us. Holy Spirit, hear Hear our our prayer. You sent the Holy Spirit upon us to teach us how to speak the language of others. Help us to listen to one another and to learn from one another. Holy Spirit, hear hear our our prayer. prayer. Restore to health all those who battle the coronavirus or any other illness. Heal them and bless them. Holy Spirit, hear Hear our our prayers. Bless those who have died. Welcome them into your loving embrace. Holy Spirit, hear Hear our our prayer. Be present with those who suffer from economic hardship. Help us all to become behold innovators, steadfast in strength, a people of hope and generosity. Holy Spirit, hear Hear our prayer. Heal our nation of the sin of racism and injustice, that we may all learn to treat one another with respect and care. Holy Spirit, hear Hear our prayer. Build up this cathedral community during this time of isolation, O Lord, that we may find ways to support and nurture each other. Holy Spirit, hear Hear our prayer. Descend upon us as you descended upon the disciples in the upper room, that we may be so filled with your presence that we emerge to change the face of the earth. Holy Spirit, hear Hear our prayer. O God, you have bound us together in a common life. Help us in the midst of our struggles for justice and truth to confront one another without hatred or bitterness and to work together with mutual forbearance and respect in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. My sisters and brothers, the peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. We're so glad you've joined us on this Trinity Sunday. Welcome, welcome to the cathedral. We're grateful to have you with us virtually, and we can feel your presence here. Just a few announcements. The cathedral remains open during the week from Tuesdays through Fridays, from 10 to 1, for pilgrims. That would be anyone who wants to come and quietly light a candle or say prayers. If you want to receive the sacrament, that will be served at noon on Wednesdays and Fridays with one of the priests. We are opening slowly and offering social distance worship now at Promise to continue to offer this service at 10, and we encourage all of you who feel in the least bit uncomfortable being close to others to continue to worship virtually It is full worship, and we're grateful that you're here with us online. Our flowers on the altar today are given by one of our beloved parishioners, Faye Wisner, and they are from her garden, white in honor of the Trinity. 
I want to remind you to continue to donate food to our St. Mary's Pantry by dropping off non-perishable food at the cathedral at the Church Street door. We are so grateful to those of you who, when you go to the grocery store, are picking up one more bag to bring here and help feed those who are hungry. Those numbers are growing, and we need your help. And finally, I remind you to continue to be generous with this cathedral. Please mail in envelopes with checks, or you can just simply go online to donate at our website, jackscathedral.org. Blessed are those who give, Jesus said, for it is more blessed to give than to receive. Today's musical offering is the motet, Hear, O My Lord, by contemporary British composer Alan Viner. Viner is well known in Britain as an organist, composer, and music educator. Hear, O My Lord was published in 1993 and is a serene and straightforward setting of verses by the Scottish poet Horatius Bonner. Bonner is considered one of the major hymn writers of the 19th century, and our own Hymnal 1982 contains no less than seven hymns with texts by him. The words from today's motet were first published in an October 1855 service leaflet at St. Andrew's Free Church in Scotland, where Bonner's brother was pastor. We invite you to bring your bread before you and to see that as part of our mystical communion, our agape feast, our holy meal that we share one with another, even at the distance. All things come of thee, O Lord, and, and of, of thine, thine own, own have, have we, we given, given thee. thee. Amen. Amen. We continue in your prayer book on page 367, Eucharistic Prayer B. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. For with your co-eternal Son and Holy Spirit, you are one God, one Lord, and trinity of persons and in unity of being. And we celebrate the one and equal glory of you, O Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Therefore, we praise you, 
joining with our voices and with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Give thanks to you, O God, for the goodness and love which you have made known to us in creation, in the calling of Israel to be your people, in your word spoken through the prophets, and above all, in the word made flesh, Jesus, your Son. For in these last days you send him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In him you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In him you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night before he died for us, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it, gave it to his disciples, and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine. When he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, according to his command, O Father, we, we remember, remember his, his death, death, we proclaim, proclaim his, his resurrection, resurrection, we, we await, await his, his coming in glory. glory. And we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son and his sacrifice, that we may be acceptable through him, being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, put all things in subjection under your Christ, and bring us to that heavenly country where with all your saints we may enter the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, and the author of our salvation, by him and with him and in him. In the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now, as our, Christ, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, our Father who, who art, art in, in heaven, heaven, hallowed, hallowed be, be thy, thy name. name. Thy, thy kingdom, kingdom come, come, thy will, will be done. done on earth as it as is, it is in, heaven. in heaven. Give, Give us this day our daily bread, and, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. 
and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia, Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia. At this time, I invite you to share your bread, eating yourself with those around you at the computer as we lift our own chalice and bread and offer it among us in the sanctuary. Now let us pray together the post-communion prayer. Eternal God, Heavenly Heavenly Father, Father, you you have have graciously graciously accepted accepted us as living living members members of your your Son, Son, our Savior, Savior, Jesus Christ. Christ. And you you have have fed fed us us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to to love love and and serve you with gladness gladness and singleness of heart heart, through through Christ Christ our Lord. Lord. Amen. Amen. The peace of God which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. The blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit bless, preserve, and keep you this day and forevermore. Amen. Amen. And now go in peace to love and to serve the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia.